channel. Real quick. Real quick. Y'all recognize this center console. I don't know if y'all also uh, aware of that. It is hot here in Atlanta, okay? Uh, typically, what? It's, what? 10 o'clock right now in the morning? And it's already like 80, maybe 85, 90. Okay, I said all that to say uh, people want their AC to work. And in this case, it's not working, okay? So what I'm about to do is check this car out uh, to see why the AC ain't working. Let me see if I can get in here. Now, guys, y'all know there's a maybe two, three sides to AC system. Uh, the AC, the plumbing, which is mostly all the hardware components under the hood. Compressor, condenser, uh, evaporator. Evaporator's inside, so that's not so much. Uh, it's still plumbing, but it's on the in, it's in the interior air area. And uh, the condenser, the dryer, things like that, okay? So that has to be up, up, you know, up to par. That has to be working. There's an electrical side, okay? Uh, you know, you need some kind of control device to signal AC request. You know, I don't want to go through all that on this video. So AC request is basically uh, you being the requester. You wanting AC. You are hot, so you have uh, your temperature, your body temperature is hot, and you want it to be cooled off. So naturally, you get in the car, you turn the AC on, that's the blower, it is blowing. Is it cold? Absolutely not. So you would push right, right here. That signals you request AC. So with that signal, a lot of things happen, okay? Uh, 12 volts traveling throughout the AC electrical system, and eventually it should make it to the compressor, and the compressor should come on. Okay, that's still, we're still on the electrical side right now. That's when the plumbing side kick in. When the compressor clutch engage, uh, the plumbing activates and you should get some cooling from the AC system, all right? But that's not happening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in order to get max cooling, uh, you really want research on. But research doesn't matter at this point because you're not even getting regular cooling. You're not even getting outside air cool. You're not even getting any cool. So we have a problem. Now, you as the troubleshooter have to determine if your problem is electrical or plumbing. That's what I'm about to do, guys. So now I did a short video. Actually, it was a P my daughter's PT Cruiser. And I told you some things you can check in the event you don't have any tools. All right? This is not the case here. I have AC gauges here at this place. I can check pressures. I can verify pressure. Because once I verify, verify pressures... I can move on to the next stage of troubleshooting AC. All right. So if I have pressure, uh, likely it's an electrical issue. All right. So I'm talking too much. Let me go inside and find out which part of the AC system is not functioning as designed as it's supposed to. All right. So guys, I'm gonna go to an ad break. When I get back, we're gonna check and make sure, or we're gonna check and find out. What is the problem with this AC? Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back. All right, guys. Thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for staying with me. All right, I'm going to leave the AC on. Let's go outside and uh, check a few things, guys. Let's go. Alright guys, so as you can see, uh, we need to check pressure, okay? Now, here's a low side point, <laughs> and guys, I'm going to give you a heads up. On some of these cars, the high side port is extremely hard to get to. Say for instance, that's the high side port right there. So what I'm going to do is only hook up my low side port. I really want to know how much, if I have pressure in here at all. I really want to know if I have Freon in here at all. Now, if you're real in a hurry, just you can take some and push down on this and see if you get a. The only thing that would indicate is that you have Freon in it. You can't tell how much in it uh, by doing that. So I highly recommend you use gauges. All right. 
So let's get this low side hooked up. I'm really. All right, low side is hooked up, guys. Yes, we have plenty of low side pressure. All right, so now I highly recommend you hook up the high side and see what its pressure is. All right, but uh, we're gonna skip that part for now. Let's move on because uh, what I need to see now is if the compressor is on. I know the AC request is on. I know the driver won't AC, but now we need to see if the compressor is actually on. All right, a quick, easy way to do that is if you can't see it from the top, <laughs> it's simple. You have to go to the bottom. So let's get it. All right, guys, a quick look at that compressor. Even with the request, even with the AC switch on, you can see it's not running. And you can see you have low side pressure, all right? So what you can conclude from that is, oh, uh, this is an electrical issue. There's an open somewhere, okay? Now I might try to pull up a diagram and show you the circuit. If I can find a diagram, I'll show you the circuit, but there's an open somewhere. Now you have protection devices on the AC system. You have a high side protection device, or high pressure protection device, or low pressure protection device, and because this is a generation 2 PT Cruiser, you have uh, a tip them over there that also gets that signal. So, uh, and also this is this system is on the bus network. So if you have a scan tool, you might see some type of AC open code. All right, so go ahead and get a scan and see if you have any AC code. I'm not sure you would see it in the form of a P code, but I'm gonna tell y'all some of the easiest thing to check on this car. And that's this car only. It's any car actually that's uh, one of the sensors are uh, easily accessible. Okay, on this particular car, uh, this pressure switch here, okay? Again, if any of these systems is open, any of these sensors switch. These are switches, right? This two wire setup. So they basically open and close. Let's say if this switch is open, or just say it's not doing its job, which closes the contact, and allow the circuit to go through, yes, your compressor will not come on. So the easiest way to check that, guys, is the simple uh, bypass. All right, so I'm gonna take this off and put a jumper wire in between these two contacts and see if my electrical portion of the AC system, see if the circuit closed and the system operate. All right, let me find a jumper wire real quick. This is the easiest thing to check because it's right here in your face. Now, there's a switch on the compressor. All right, that's even a switch on some cars, uh, the AC liquid line, okay? But uh, this one is easy, so let me grab a jumper wire and let's move right along. Stay with me. All right, guys, thanks for staying with me. I went and got a jumper wire. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, manually close this circuit and see if the system operates. Let's see if we can get a good. All right, did y'all feel that? All right, I felt a bump. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I felt the bump which signals that the compressor came on. All right, and actually, you look at the gauges, my low side went down with signals the compressor's on. Let me feel these lines. Yes, these lines are getting colder. All right, so think about this for a second, guys. When I close the circuit on this high pressure switch, my compressor should be running. We're gonna go down and verify, but yes, my pressure went down and these lines are now cold. Let's go down to the bottom and see if this compressor is actually running. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the compressor is running. The lines are cold. The pressure is low. I don't know what this pressure is because uh, the car is extremely hot and I can't get down there to connect it to the high side port. So, ladies and gentlemen, what that tells me is this high side pressure switch or low side, I'm not sure which one. Because it's on the dryer, it may be a low side pressure switch. Okay, but in any event, it's not closing the circuit, allowing the circuit to be complete, which will turn on the compressor. So, basically guys, we're gonna have to replace this, all right? 
So let me go to the parts department or go get to some parts and uh, see if we can get this replaced, guys. Stay with me, don't go anywhere. I will be right back. All right, guys, thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for staying with me. Here we go, guys. This is the new switch I got from parts department. Uh, this is an OEM. Yes, come with the O-ring and the switch. Okay, now to replace these, it's not that difficult. In some cases, they hand tight, but if you can't, just grab your 17 millimeter wrench. Started turning, and don't worry about it blowing out because it's screwed into a Schrader valve. So once you take it off, the Schrader valve will close and allow Freon not to come out. So just unscrew it. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and replace this O-ring that's on here. It helps with sealing. Alright guys, thanks for staying with me. We got it on. So let's remove this jumper wire and we're going to plug it in. And we're going to see if we get our AC back the normal way. Okay. There you go. Alright. Let's go start the car up and see what happens. All right, guys, let's uh, turn it on. Throw the windows up. Ooh, it's already cool. All right, guys, let's put this on max code all the way. And let's turn it to, to signify or to get super max cooling, you want the air to be recirculated. All right, so let's push the recirculation button. All right, whoo, that feels good, guys. Yes, the AC is now working. So what did we learn from this, guys? Remember what I talked about earlier. You have a plumbing side to the AC system and you have an electrical side. So during our diagnosis, it was determined that the electrical portion of the AC system was at fault. All right, so that's when we, uh... now I didn't go through the basic, basic, basic. I gotta do basic videos for uh, my students. I have some students that's, uh, that are subscribed to the channel. I wanna talk very basic with them. So, but that wasn't this type of video. I, I, I cut or I shortcutted a few items to get through with it because uh, she's actually uh, waiting on her car. All right, so when I get some time, a lot of time in these problems, I will record the basic versions, versions of the video. All right, so, but for now, guys, we have, it is freezing in here. Woohoo! Now, you sure have a thermometer in here, but if you, if you good with your, you know, you're not, your hand not numb, or you have feelings in your hand, and your body temperature, your body temperature start, start going down, you actually know it's cold, and this is cold. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. That's all I have, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, now, this was a PT Cruiser, but these diagnoses apply to any car. Any car, just about every car out there uh, with AC, air conditioning, uh, the same theory apply, guys. You're going to have an electrical portion of the AC system. You're going to have a plumbing side of the AC system. You just got to separate it, find out which one is at fault, and diagnose the problem, you know, based on those findings. All right? So let me wrap this up. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video.